Hello everyone, today I will be demonstrating my first Unity project, Tic-Tac-Toe, made as part of the mobile gaming program for Full Sail University. Since the program is an accelerated program, I had a limited time to work on this project, so if the game seems incomplete, I apologize. That being said, let's get into it. As you can see, this is our main menu. We have th three buttons here. Um, the mode text is what the current game mode is. By default, it's two-player, so let's start a two-player game. And here we have the text that indicates who's the current player. And all you have to do to make a play is to click or touch a tile. And you can see that if O wins, you get a fancy 3D object uh, rotating O. And you have two options whenever a game is over. You can either rematch your opponent or you can return to the main menu. So let's do a rematch to see what happens when X wins. You can see here there's a rotating X because X won this time. So now we fold with two-player mode. Let's look at some of the other modes. Let's start with an easy computer. Now the easy computer moves randomly. He doesn't care for any sort of strategy at all. So you'll see that even if I make a two in a row, he won't always move to block me. So I won easily this, as a result. So let's fight a harder computer this time. Now the harder computer has to take time to think, so, some, so sometimes he takes a while to play. Um, right here, you notice if I start to play on a corner, this hard computer will always play in the center. The reason for this is because if the hard computer played anywhere else, uh, player one would have an automatic victory. But for now, if you play correctly, the hard computer should always force a draw. So now let's look at an optional feature I added. Uh, right here, you can select which token uh, the computer uses. Um, so let's switch him to O so that he goes first. Now let's look at two computers. Um, because of the way the algorithm is programmed, the two computers should always end up in a draw, which I will demonstrate here. You can see that no matter where they started, the game always ended up in a draw. So now let's look at the code. All of the menus use the same code, so I will only be showing one of them. At the start, we start up our game board, which I'll show later, but that's what Reset does. It sets up the initial board. When creating the GUI for the menus, we cannot assume what the screen size is, so everything everything is relative to the screen size or screen position essentially so right here you can see that I have I created that gooey box border which has a mar has margins of about 40 on all sides and right here you can see we're positioning objects relative to the gooey box you don't want to use absolute coordinates because then you could place things that are off the screen on smaller devices right here we have our mode text as you saw that was above the buttons and we use the switch on the game mode to determine what text to show so that we show the right text. And then right here we have our buttons, we create them, and then if the button is clicked, then we load the particular level. Um, load level is how the Unity determines which scene to load. So, I'll, as you can see, start game is 1, game mode is 2, and credits is 4. And I will show by opening the build settings as you can see, start game leads to tic-tac-toe, game mode to game mode, and credits to credits. 
So now back to the code. Um, here on update, um, you can see we have an input get key down. This checks to see if the user presses the back button on a mobile device. If they do so, then the application will quit, which is what we want from the main menu. So now let's look at the game itself. So here we have the game mode, of course, the board state, which is an array of nine slots, which stores all the states of the tiles. We have the current player, which in the standard tic-tac-toe, the current player starts as O. And then the computer player, as you saw in the computer difficulty, this is how it determines what the current computer player is in a player versus computer game, which by default is X. Here is there is a winner, which it checks if either player O wins, player X wins, or there are no empty tiles left. And if there are no empty tiles left, it's a draw. If we go down to get empty tiles, this counts up all the empty tiles that the board has and returns them. This is useful for other functions later. Um, player wins, we first get the correct tile that we're looking for depending on which player we're checking for a winner and then we check all the rows all the columns we're basically skipping two tiles every time and then we check for diagonals which the diagonals are 0, 048 and 246 down here we have reset which sets up the current player as O in case in case the game ends with O we want to make sure that uh, the new game starts with O again. We clear the board of all the marks and we add nine empty tiles. Now let's look at an actual tile. Now every tile has a collider to determine if the player has touched or clicked on the tile. We have to first get the collider by getting it from its game object and then we're loading the sprite for the for the tiles. The sprite is essentially a, st a three state sprite um, an empty spot, an X, and an O. Um, now, on every frame, if there's no winner, then we want to check for input. If it's a touch, get the touch position. If it's a mouse click, get the mouse position. Otherwise, there was no input, so we want to return. Now, right here, this is where I had a, a challenge. Um, before, I was just inputting the touch position directly. The problem with that is that uh, by default, the touch position Z coordinate is zero, and that grabs the camera. So I have to edit the Z coordinate, and because the tiles are 2.5 units away from the camera, I used 2.5 here. Once I've done that, I want to change the coordinates to world coordinates, which I do here. Um, get rid of the Z coordinate, because this is a 2D game. I only care about X and Y. And then now I want to check to see if where I touched is basically intersecting with the collider of my current tile. If it does, then I touch the tile, and now I want to place a mark there. But before I place a mark, I want to make sure if the computer is moving or not. The reason for this is so that you can't just play on tiles when it's not your turn. And then right here, we make sure the tile is empty first. That's what the zero is, as I mentioned. Empty is the first slot. And once we've satisfied those conditions, then we're placing a mark. If we're player O, we place an O tile, then it's X's turn. And then X tile, then O's turn for the other case. Now let's look at a computer player. Um, right here, if there isn't a winner and we're not moving, this is in case you're placing a computer, of course. If we're doing player versus computer, and it's currently the computer's turn, then we want to tell the game, hey, we're currently moving, so don't let the player do anything then the computer will make his move and then set this back to false. Two computers is different because if I did the exact same thing, the computer would move as soon as it's his turn and it would look super fast and you wouldn't be able to tell what's going on. So instead, I add a wait down here by adding time.delta time, which is the time since the last update, and I keep adding those together until I've reached an elapsed time of half a second. Once I've done that, then I can move again. Now let's look at the computer actually moving. First he gets which player he is, who the, who the next player in line is, and which tile to use. Then if we're an easy computer, we just want to pick a random tile, which is done here, and pick one from one of the empty tiles. 
if we're a hard computer, we want to use the minimax algorithm. So let's move down to the minimax algorithm. Essentially, with the minimax algorithm, one person wants to maximize their chance of winning, and the other person wants to minimize their opponent's chance of winning. And so that's what's the initial setup here. Then we want to look over all of the tiles. If we have an empty tile, let's try placing our tile there. And if we and if we have a winner, let's assume we're X. If we won, then we love this position. So set a positive uh, account score. Uh, the attempt score uh, depends on how many empty tiles there are, which means that the computer will favor wins that are faster. Essentially, you make less moves. If O wins, we don't like that, so this is negative. And then if it's a draw, it's in favor of neither person, so it's a zero. If we didn't win, and we keep going, keep making moves until we do find a winner. And then once we find a favorable position, and it's better than our current one, then we save it right here. Now right here, zero is set to I, which is the current position on the board that tells the computer where to play, and this is the score of that position to play. Now this part here is optional. You don't need it. I just did that so that the AI would be a little more random. Essentially, he has a 50% chance of either keeping his best or taking the new one if the favorability of picking the moves are the same. So that's all the main code. Now let's look at the optional rotates. As you can see, here's the vector three. This is the axis to rotate on. And this is a flat speed of 100 uh, degrees per second. And it's done per second because I multiply by time dot delta time to change it from meters per frame to meters per second. What in this case, since it's a rotate, it's degrees. Now, if we are, and if X is the winner, then we want the object to be active. If they're not the winner, we will we want the object to go away, and that's what makes it disappear. And then here is our rotate. If we're active, we rotate around the axis, change the units, and then multiply by our speed of rotation. Um, o rotate is very similar. Everything's the same except rotate around. This is the position to rotate around, the axis on which we're rotating. So in the case of the O, it's straight up. And then this is our speed. Now that I have shown the code, I will show how this game plays out on several different devices. I'll start with my phone. Okay, so this is my phone, and here's the application. So, let's start a hard computer game. You can see everything still fits, even on this smaller screen. Sorry if it's hard to see the shapes. Now I will show this on my tablet. You see everything's still a decent size. We can, I can even show landscape mode. Landscape mode, everything still works. And now finally, I will show the credits. You can see there's my name and date of when I created this. And you can see where I got some code. Um, on top, that's how I figured out about the screen to world point problem I had. Middle is code I got from the tutorial, and the bottom is how I learned about rotating the, the 3D objects. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.